Hello and welcome to CMC Marcus and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 7th of August. And once again, it's a familiar theme. We're seeing new record highs in US markets. I think that's largely as a result of the effects of the weaker dollar. There's still dysfunction in Washington DC as Donald Trump um, lurches from one crisis to another. Um, the decision or the reports of a grand jury by special counsel Robert Mueller have basically put additional pressure on the beleaguered president and they placed further downward pressure on the US dollar. That in turn has pushed further upward pressure on the euro and we're seeing that played out quite nicely in this chart here. This is an overlay of the German DAX or the Germany 30 and euro dollar and you can see that potentially for the third successive week in succession we've seen a decline in European markets and we've now completely wiped out the Macron bounce that we saw in April. And what's causing that? Well, it's certainly not the data. The data continues to be fairly positive for Europe, and yet the German DAX and the CAC Caron continue to fall. And the reason for that, I think, can be stemmed from this additional leg higher here on this euro dollar chart. Because what we're seeing here is a more expensive euro, and the perception is ultimately that that will weigh on the profitability of those German companies who export an awful lot outside of the Eurozone. So we're seeing we're seeing we're seeing the euro head towards 120. We're seeing the dollar index um, post nearly its lowest levels um, in just under a year. And the direction of travel does appear to suggest that we're probably going to see further gains in the euro. And the reason I say that is because of this chart that I've got here right now this is a daily chart don't worry too much about that it does look a little bit cluttered but if we look at it on a weekly basis we can see that we're probably going to be closing above the 200 week moving average on euro dollar for the first time since mid 2014 so that's a significant break higher which if sustained could well propel us back to levels that we last saw at the end of 2014 which is around about 125. So that's a big jump. Now we're not going to see that overnight, obviously, but I think in terms of where the key support levels are, we're all the way back now at 116.20. So I'll certainly be looking for further evidence of gains in euro dollar. So on a technical basis, we need to um, stay above uh, 116.20. And the and in that context, I'll be keeping a very close eye out on some of the key US data that's out later this week and mainly it's inflationary data that will be or inflation data cpi data that i will have my eyes on um, at the moment we don't know the i don't know the results of what the non-farm payrolls numbers were or are i don't think they're going to add too much to the overall debate as to whether or not the fed will tighten further this year i still maintain the likelihood of any further fed tightening this year remains unlikely the focus is very much on balance sheet reduction and ultimately, I think the focus will continue to be on the ECB, the economic data within Europe and um, speculation as to when the ECB could well taper its current stimulus program. The other key factors that I'm keeping an eye out for later this week is an OPEC meeting. Um, and given the rise that we've seen in the oil price over the course of the past few days, I think there's potential that um, we could be starting to see some form of rebalancing in the oil market. We've seen five successive weeks of U.S. inventories in deficit to the tune of around about three to four million barrels. Having said that, this last week's inventory was slightly lower than expected, around about two and a half million, so the draw. And we are bumping against significant resistance level here on this Brent chart at around about fifty-three and a half dollars a barrel. We are, more importantly, above the 200-day moving average. But as we can see from previous instances of that, just because we've broken above it doesn't suggest that we're going to stay above it. The key resistance line I'm looking for on Brent is this resistance level from the February highs that comes in just below $55 a barrel. But at the moment, we're finding a little bit of resistance, three successive peaks at around about $53.5 a barrel. The oscillator is starting to look a little bit overbought, could be starting to roll over. So I'll be very much keeping an eye on that. What else? The other factor that's likely to play into um, 
the oil price is obviously the weaker dollar and that could well put upward pressure on oil prices but there's an OPEC meeting this week between OPEC and non-OPEC members and it's to do with compliance or non-compliance of some of the production caps that have been put in place by that OPEC agreement and I think there'll be some pressure brought to bear to those countries who aren't complying with the output cap. I think it would be helpful if Nigeria and Libya were brought within the output cap but that's I think another discussion entirely. Also out later this week we've got China trade data and I'll be particularly interested in the export data there. Is the global economy starting to slow down? Um, if it is um, and we've hit peak global economy then that should be reflected in the Chinese export data. More importantly is the Chinese economy starting to improve on an internal basis so we'll also be looking at the imports data to see whether or not um, the improvement in imports that we've seen over the course of the past few weeks or, so, or weeks and months rather has been sustained. Other, um, other factors I'm keeping an eye out for this week is US CPI. Um, inflation continues to lag behind expectations in the US. I don't think this week's CPI numbers are likely to be any different. We're certainly looking at around about a number in, in the region of 1.7% in that regard. It's also been a difficult week for sterling and I know there's a, those, there are those of you out there who are wondering after last week's rather dovish interpretation of the Bank of England meeting as to whether or not the uptrend that we've seen in the pound is over. Certainly against the dollar I don't think the uptrend is over. We've certainly got a long way to go before we see any evidence that this uptrend that's really been in place since um, January, February, March is showing any signs of turning around. We have seen a key reversal day here. That could prompt a little bit of a pullback towards the 130 level and even potentially lower than that towards this trendline support here. But ultimately, I still maintain a fairly bullish stance against the dollar. Not so much against the euro. We've seen a significant break higher there. But we still remain below the highs that we saw um, in the middle of last year or just, just after the referendum vote at 93. We're finding a little bit of resistance around about 90 and a half. If we can break through 90 and a half, then we could retest those, those highs that we saw in September, October. Um, earnings announcements that I'm keeping an eye out for later this week. Snap in particular. Will the snap pop that we saw, will, will, the, will the snap push higher uh, that we saw post IPO, which is now turning into a little bit of a dive, continue its downward trajectory? I'm posting a little update on snap on the user analysis website and you can read it at your leisure there. But um, in a, in a soundbite, I'm not over optimistic about uh, snap's future profitability um, or of likelihood of making profits in the future. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.